I suppose it's not the kind of uh, story I would necessarily see myself being involved in, you know, a story of this uh, high school gal who's in the middle of all these crises, but uh, I don't know, it's, it's really wonderful writing, you know, it's very funny, very smart, and also very unique, so I was... Uh, you know, just psyched to jump in. I think Mr. Bruner is uh, one of these guys who, you know, he's probably pretty good at his job, but he really is one of those guys who comes in and punches the clock and looks forward to getting home to his... Uh, uh, well, not I guess they're not married yet, but to his girlfriend and his uh, baby. So, in some ways, you know, maybe not the model teacher, uh, but has a kind of a special relationship with Nadine in that he really likes her. I think, you know, as the scene we're shooting today, uh, I tell her that she's my favorite student but only after I really upset her by trying to make a joke about something after she's being quite vulnerable so uh, um, you know for some reason Nadine who uh, if, as I said in this scene she's feeling very lonely you know and doesn't connect with anyone else in the school but for some reason she connects with my character, and uh, so sometimes my character, well, my character's not the most sentimental guy, you know, and uh, and yet, I, you know, I think it's obvious to her that he cares about her. I feel like we have a good chemistry. I think she's an extraordinary actress. I, uh, I really was amazed to when I the first scene we did together I was really amazed with how adept she is at just flowing with everything and trying new things and uh, very creative very smart actress uh, really has the goods and uh, so I thought yesterday went great, and then we're coming in today with another. This scene is a bit heavier and more complicated, and uh, man, she just she knows what she's doing, and uh, yeah, it's great to see someone with that ability at this stage of her career, in such early stage of her career. And, um, Jim and I both think that she has the potential to be acting for the next 60 years, you know, she really is good. I don't think my character is necessarily a catalyst for changes that happen with her, but I'm certainly a sounding board and someone who she can come to for help. And ironically, being not the most sentimental guy, you know, it's not like I'm giving her deep emotional, heartfelt advice or anything, but I'm kind of there for her. It's been really great. Uh, the first time I met her, I was just in L.A. briefly, so we kind of arranged a, a, a meeting hastily which is while I was kind of weighing whether or not to do it. And I guess it was meeting her at that time, and we just took a long walk in uh, the Beverly Hills area. And uh, I, I thought, wow, this is a really incredible lady. And uh, very strong, smart, funny, you know. Uh, and... But you can never really tell how someone will be as a director because it's such a huge undertaking. And, you know, some people just absolutely fall apart under the pressure. I've seen that happen. But uh, 
I was interested to see what would happen, and, and also Jim told me that of all the directors working, only 1.8% are female, which is kind of shocking. So I also like the aspect of, you know, that it's a female director and that she wrote it, and that. so I was interested to see what would happen. And then we come here, and I'm really delighted because I think she's... Uh, so smart. It really knows how to talk to actors, which is, I mean, I've seen directors who are really big directors working a long time who have no idea how to talk to actors, and she just really, she, she articulates what she wants very well, and you can see already several times, we, this is just my second day, but several times she'll say something and she says it in just the right way that I'm like, oh, I get it, of course. That's way better than what I was doing. And, um, you know, she's very patient and uh, decisive. And uh, I think um, I think she's getting the, the most bang for her buck and, you know, the most out of these scenes that she can. And she doesn't really compromise. It's not like, okay, well, that was good enough. Let's move on. She's, she's going to make sure she gets the right take. It's almost, you can't hardly calculate it. I remember years ago, uh, Jim was mentoring someone, and he was flying off a lot to Dallas, Texas, and, I, and, and, and all the people who were involved were like from Texas and and I was wondering my god how good must this script be that he's trusting a first time director and all this uh, and all these basically first time actors and uh, putting all this effort into it and of course it was uh, Bottle Rocket and it was Wes Anderson and it was Owen and Luke Wilson and it was just like that's from Jim mentoring, you know. I'm sure those guys would have surfaced eventually, but certainly Jim helped uh, make all that happen. And he, you know, he has such wisdom and such passion about the material, I think. He, I mean, you can't, it's hard to even imagine how much influence he has when he's mentoring someone. Independence Day Resurgence has been given a $200 million budget, $125 million more than Independence Day 1, which had a $75 million budget and had a box office result of more than $800 million, making it the highest grossing movie of 1996. Click here for more cool videos. Thanks for watching.